If you feel like you're getting more efficient with your two main lifts, the snatch and the clean and jerk, but you get into a Metcon setting and they really break down, your back blows up, your grip blows up, and you're really frustrated with your ability to develop and maintain those positions under fatigue, it could be how you're training. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a little bit more of an intelligent model for building training progressions to improve at weightlifting in the sport of CrossFit. For those of you not familiar with the terminology, when I use the term weightlifting, I'm talking about the sport of weightlifting. So I'm not talking about powerlifting like bench press, deadlift, back squat, or what you might do in a traditional globo gym lifting weights with dumbbells, bicep curls. I'm talking about the sport, which consists of doing the snatch and doing the clean and jerk. So it's two separate movements. And you can actually go to meets and compete in the sport of weightlifting. The testing demands at a meet are you have three attempts to build to a max snatch, then they reset the platform, they get the group going, and then they do three sets to build to a max clean and jerk. The way it works in a meet is essentially you lift and then there's people are putting in the next weights that they're gonna lift and you lift when your next weight comes up. So you could potentially have multiple minutes or you know 10 plus minutes between your lifts or if you're following yourself you could have approximately two minutes between lifts so that gives you some sort of an understanding of what the testing demands for the sport of weightlifting are it's basically full recovery maximal weight lifting now if we contrast that to what a test looks like in the sport of crossfit i'm going to use crossfit open workout 13.1 as an example so you have 17 minutes to complete as many reps as possible through going through this sequence. 40 burpees, 30 snatches. The weight for the first 30 snatches is 45 pounds for the females, 75 for the males. Just to give some context on percentages for when we go to training and looking at how I would train for CrossFit, I used a 225 to 275 pound max snatch, which would probably be an advanced or high level intermediate or low level advanced CrossFit male athlete. And if you take that as their one rep max, then this weight at 75 pounds would be approximately 27 to 33% of their one rep max. So 40 burpees, 30 snatches, then 30 burpees, 30 snatches, the next weight is going up. So it goes to 75 or 135 which is 50 to 60% of the 1RM based on that 225 to 275 range. Then 20 burpees, then 30 snatches at 100 or 165 for the males, which is 60 to 73% of the one rep max based on that 225 to 275 range. Then 10 burpees, then AMRAP snatches at 120 or 210, which this becomes a wider range, but 77 to 93% of a one rep max. So you can see the testing demands are very, very, very different. Over the course of an entire meet, you're gonna take six lifts, and these are all gonna be very near maximal so there might be above 85 percent for all six of these lifts and that's all that you're going to do over the course of an entire meet in one test in crossfit you could potentially have to do let's say most people are finishing somewhere around here if they're intermediate to advanced trainees that means you could be potentially doing 90 burpees and 90 snatches over the course of 70 minutes with the weight ranges being anywhere from 27 to 73% of your one rep max. Now, obviously these percentages would be way different. If your one rep max snatch as a more beginner or somebody who's just not as strong in the Olympic lifts, this could be way higher of a percentage. So you might be at your 93% in the third barbell or the second barbell for yourself. So you can see the testing demands are entirely different and you're not doing them fresh, you're mixing them with burpees. So obviously what follows from that is that if you wanna train for these things optimally, your training will look differently. I'm gonna focus most on CrossFit because I think CrossFit is how you need to apply different training principles. And there's a lot of information out there if you wanna be a pure weightlifter, but this is an example training session for weightlifting. Three snatches at 80%, two at 86%, one at 88, one at 92. And for all those lifts, you're gonna rest as needed between. So you do a rep at 80%, you might sit down in a box and rest two to three minutes, and you're gonna do that for three reps then you're gonna go up in weight and you're gonna keep continuing up in that format, just adding those reps, working on making sure that's explosive, tight and precise as possible. Then snatch pulls, which would be an accessory movement for the snatch, five singles at 105% of your one rep max. Again, those are rest as needed between. So you pull a lift as hard as you possibly can, sit down, 
rest for three to five minutes, and then repeat that five times. Then back squats, four sets of six at 80% as accessory work for your legs. And then an accessory series of three different movements. So over here you see it says D1, D2, D3. What that indicates essentially is a circuit. So you would do one set of GH raises, which would be a hamstring accessory exercise, one set of side planks on both sides, one set of single leg barbell hip thrusts, and then you go back and you do another set of GH raises, side planks, and single leg barbell hip thrusts. So total contraction volume in a session like this is pretty low. Rest time is to full recovery. You're always worried about being as fresh as possible for each one of the lifts. Now, if we're training for CrossFit, that doesn't really make sense to do something like this Assuming then that you're going to be able to take those strength gains and transfer them into being able to do 100 reps over the course of 17 minutes. They're completely different energy systems, different testing demands. It's just a completely different type of stress on the body. So in order to train for that, the progressions look a little bit different. So A is snatch, and it's actually the same thing. So if you want to be good at CrossFit, then you do really want to drive these percentages as low as possible. So if you have a 300 pound snatch, for example, then these percentages become lighter and it becomes easier as you go through. Now, it's not a direct correlation because if you get strong without the conditioning base, it doesn't really help you, but you still do want to prioritize strength. So A stays exactly the same. Rest as needed to full recovery. It gives you the time to be able to refine your mechanics, your consistency, and be explosive with every one of those reps. Now that's where the divergence or that's where the similarities in the program structure completely diverge. So for B, AMRAP power snatches in one minute at 75 or 55. So I put fixed weights in here to give some sort of a similar type of weight and loading parameter to what you would see in a sports specific test. But if you're not strong enough yet, then that could be 35% of your one rep max and you can actually create your progressions based on wherever you are as a beginner or an intermediate or as, as an advanced athlete. After you finish that one minute, immediately into rest three minutes actively on the rower. So in weightlifting, where you might stop your lift and just sit down and recover fully, here we're gonna actually try to recover while we're, while we're working. So that way you have the ability to recover while you're in some sort of a work format, which is necessary for the sport of CrossFit. So I have two sets of that at the lighter load, then a C1, C2 series, which goes up in weight. It's 20 bar facing burpees. And remember the C1, C2 means it's a circuit format. So I do 20 bar facing burpees, which simulates my movement from the test rest 15 seconds, and then I do snatch pulls. The difference here with the snatch pulls, we'll still use that 105%. The difference is that we're gonna do three in a row. So that's what this 1.1.1 means, is that we're actually going to lift, drop it, go back down, reset, lift, drop it. So now, where as A was training your one rep max precision, C1 and C2 is actually training sport specific strength endurance. So if you wanna be able to lift heavy under fatigue, you need to give your body some of the fatigue that you're gonna experience in the test and then practice lifting. Snatch pulls here is a little bit safer and more effective because you can load this heavier without risking missing or without risking just being too tired in your catch position to be able to catch the lift. So this gives you an opportunity to be a little bit heavier in your loading and a little bit safer. And I think if you do that over time, over longer periods, you'll be able to develop the strength that you need in a fatigue-based setting. And then D concludes with back squats. Basically, I just lowered the volume. Instead of doing six to eight reps, it's six reps at 80%, rest as needed to full recovery. And what we do here is essentially put our heaviest lifting at the end of the session. So again, you're practicing lifting under fatigue. So your body is getting accustomed to having cardiac stress and muscle endurance stress and all the different types of stress that you would experience in CrossFit and then say, okay, now lift heavy. So it's essentially mimicking the demands in a training style format. So thematically, what you'll see in the two different types of ways to train or even the two different types of ways to test is that intensity of weightlifting is gonna be a little bit higher. The focus on precision and timing has to be way higher. If you wanna have a perfect 1RM that's as high as you possibly can, then you wanna be as tight as possible without any deviation and faults in your lifts. 
and you wanna make sure that fatigue is as low as possible. So you're gonna rest a lot more frequently if you're focusing on weightlifting. Contrast that to CrossFit, volume of reps are way up, variation in lifting is way up. So here we only have two lifts. Over here, a muscle snatch or a power snatch might be something that would be necessary to be able to go through a test like 13.1 and then fatigue is way up. So we're lifting after doing bar facing burpees or we're doing active recovery work in between the power snatches. In between basically what we have as like, okay, both, if you wanna excel in both, then you need your positions, your squat position at the bottom, your shoulder positions, your spine angle, your hip flexion, all that stuff needs to be dialed in whether you're weightlifting or crossfitting, your mobility, and then your technique. So you still need optimal 1RM technique if you want to be able to lift safely in crossfit. And just not might not be as precise as somebody who's focused purely on weightlifting. So that gives you some sort of an understanding of how weightlifting applied to the sport of CrossFit is different. If you are trying to weightlift in CrossFit, I basically have five tips for you to move forward to apply to your training. First, develop your 1RMs with confidence and do so with a coach. I think it's really important in the beginning to be able to learn from somebody who has experience seeing how people's lifting faults look like, how they break down and be able to give you some objective feedback and cues. That will be a much faster way to be able to learn the lift and not develop bad patterns. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, learn how to move in a variety of ways. So snatch and clean and jerk is all you'll see in weightlifting. In CrossFit, you might have to muscle snatch, power snatch, hang power snatch, hang squat snatch, do complexes, and there's all sorts of different ways that you're gonna have to be able to move a barbell and in different loading parameters. So make sure that you're much more comfortable with a variety of different types of lifting and doing so under fatigue. Three, build volume tolerance slowly. One of the mistakes I see people make when they're first getting into CrossFit is they see a test like this and they're like, oh, I want to do 100 reps in, in 17 minutes. While that seems like a good idea because you see some people that are at a really high level do that, it can break you down really quickly if you haven't built some of the requisite tissues and the techniques required to be able to make sure that you do that without injuring yourself. So start with a low volume that makes sense for you and then build on that over time. So if this is, let's say week you know, five of your progression, then in week six or week uh, seven or week eight, we might extend this to a minute 15, a minute 30. And those progressions from week to week will build the volume that you need to safely be able to progress. Tip number four, work touch and go lifts. So in weightlifting, you snatch, you drop it from overhead, and you're done. In CrossFit, in a test like this, you're not gonna do singles for this whole test if you wanna excel. You might be doing you know, three sets of 10 unbroken or two sets of 15 unbroken where you're hanging onto the bar the whole time. That's gonna challenge your grip, your hamstrings, your shoulders, your lower back in a much different way because the eccentric volume of lifting is so much higher than if you're just doing one rep and dropping it from the top. So make sure that you work touch and goes as part of your training program if you're trying to excel in weightlifting and CrossFit. And then finally, which I think maybe is most important, is separate training and testing. So in a sport like weightlifting, it's very clear. Here's the testing. You go to a meet, you have three attempts to build to both of the lifts. Here's the training. Do everything in your power to make sure that the next time you go to a lift that your one rep maxes are higher. That same thing is true in a sport like football. You go and you play and you scrimmage and you practice and you work on your footwork and then you play the game. You're not playing live 11 on 11 full team, full hitting scrimmages every single day to get better at the sport. Similarly, I don't think that's how you should try to approach getting better at weightlifting and CrossFit. You have training sessions like this that are building your base and then testing sessions like this to tell you how far you've come and whether or not your training gains transfer to you being better at the sport. So apply those five tips in your training if you wanna get better at weightlifting in the sport of CrossFit. Also, in our educational platform called The Classroom, I go over in a series 
weightlifting for the sport of CrossFit where I go into more depth on how to assess yourself in the sport and how to train and progress yourself so that you can identify what it is you need to get better at and have effective ways to be able to build those training progressions. Learn more about the art and science of program design for CrossFit in our online educational platform, The Classroom. Get a free seven day trial at trainingthinktank.com backslash classroom trial. It's a wrap, you know what I'm saying? Your boy Project Pata in this thing, man. Hey, look, man, thank y'all for watching Train and Think Tank's YouTube channel. Y'all hit that motherfucking subscribe button, you know what I'm saying? So y'all go ahead, man. Thank y'all for watching the channel, you know what I'm saying? Hit that motherfucking subscribe button. Let it be known what it be known what it be known, you know what I'm saying? Pata.